How did you start? So we started in the 80s, because in the 70s, in the women's liberation movement, uh, there was many lesbians who were very active, always working for the, the abortion right, for access to contraception and such things. And we noticed that the heterosexuals were not exactly sending us the lift back. So in the 80s, we were part of a very radical group, which was called L'Insoumise. And in that group, we finally noticed that we were many lesbians. So suddenly we what does it mean, l'insoumise? L'insoumise, the, the, uh, the non-submitted. So uh, we had a newspaper there, and suddenly we realized we were many. And we thought, well, after all, instead of always complaining that our issues are not taken care of, we might as well do it ourselves. We split it from that group, and we created vanilla strawberries. Poli a group of political lesbians, and little later we created the newspaper Clit 007. In the year. lesbian, irresistiblement toxique. That's a translation? Better. Yeah. Translation? Uh, in lesbian concentrate, uh, which is uh, toxic, but you irresistibly toxic. Exactly. Irresistibly toxic. So this was coming out every three months. And we were collecting articles uh, um, from all over the world, if we could, you know. Uh, when we were traveling, we were bringing back testimonies from lesbians from Japan, from here, from there. And it was a very radical group and with lots of humor. And we were having a wonderful time. Everybody was looking at us, mouth open, because we were saying things that at that time were rather Incredible. It was black and white and uh, magazine. Black and white. Journal and, and it was how many pages in what year? Oh, I don't remember exactly when we started. Maybe it's in the archives, but I think it's between uh, 80, 83, 89, something like this, more or less the 80s. And in um, 85, we took over the Illis Secretaria, which at that time, it, was from, it went from Amsterdam to Copenhagen. There was, uh, the woman was tired there, she couldn't continue, so we took it over in Geneva. And at that time, the newspaper became the Illis Newsletter, and it was published in three languages, Spanish, English, and French. And we, can, and we organized the third international lesbian conference in Geneva, uh, which was a big event, uh, many lesbians came, a whole bus came from Spain, we were so impressed, you know, the whole bus coming and stopping in front of university, and these 60 women coming out of it, you know. The How many all together? All together, I think we were 400. 400? Wow. Yeah, we were 400. 400 lesbians? In 86. In and Haya and me were there from the people here, huh? Yeah, Haya was there and Nepa was there. I came uh, hitchhiking, I was not invited. And many of them, what was it? How did that inspire you, Lepa? No, no, I mean. How did that inspire you, Lepa? <laughs> How did that inspire you? Did that inspire you to organize lesbians too? Yeah, well, uh, really, it took me some time. Oh, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. It took me some time. It took me some time. The, 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 the story is that the, 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 there was an official uh, lesbian going uh, from Yugoslavia to the meeting and I was hitchhiking with two others, in, to which in fact one wasn't even a lesbian. And uh, so, <laughs> you know, we hardly, uh, hardly, I, I hardly knew where I was going, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only one was officially invited. Well, it's not a question of official, it's a question of money. Yeah. We didn't have that much yeah, money yeah, to yeah. invite. You know, I mean, I knew, happy by, to be able I knew to by chance some. about this meeting, and it was uh, really, I didn't really quite, I wasn't yet identified as lesbian. I was still wearing a skirt, believe it or not. I think I was the only one in the skirt there. <laughs> And I was, uh, you know, very, very uh, young uh, because I didn't have this uh, lesbian identity. So I was feeling, uh, 
you know, when the, when the, when the Swiss women said, who's going to work in the kitchen, I said, yes, who's going to do all these uh, uh, bottles, yes, I do, you know, and then every time I would go back and forth carrying all these things, the, the official uh, uh, one from Yugoslavia was kissing in the different corners with the different <laughs> women then, every day. So, <laughs> yeah, and I was working, you know. <laughs> And I remember, yes, I got really a little angry. And, uh, <laughs> I, on top of all, she was from Slovenia, so we from the uh, Belgrade always think, oh, that's uh, uh, West Europe, so we, we, uh, we can't really talk with them, especially she was all dressed in a dark and very thin, so I was very scared of her. <laughs> While she probably thought, uh, from capital, you know. She thought that one from capital of the country, so she wouldn't talk to me either because I was from the capital. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, uh, anyway, uh, um, but uh, on the way back when you went back, no, but I the only the the thing the the, the <laughs> workshop I remember the most. Yes, there was. A, uh, it, it was supposed to be in some room, but we, uh, uh, for some reason that room was closed and we were standing in a hallway. Uh, 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 first of all, it was the University of Geneva. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, were, we were in, in the official university. It was the first and the only lesbian international meeting which was in, in the University of Geneva. And so we were on the second floor um, on a hallway. And I don't know why we couldn't get into the room, so he was standing uh, 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 in a hallway, and I remember one Italian woman saying, uh, you know, when I was with a man, everything was clear, you know, this happens and this happens and this happens, and then I fell in love with a woman, and, she, and I'm working, and she turned myself upside down, and now everything she wants, that's what I do. <laughs> like, you know, and I like still did not know what's going on. You know, I said, "You, what's going on?" You know, she said, "I can't put my head straight." You know, and she says, "Do this and ah, oh, like this." And I, oh, everything she does, I do. And before, when I was in men, I was an emancipated woman. I didn't do anything what he wanted me to do. <laughs> I was like, "What's going on?" You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the that's the uh, workshop I remember the best, <laughs> and I remember I was working nonstop in this. There was a self-organized uh, um, meeting. No, no, self-organized uh, food. Ah, yeah. Uh, uh, how to say? You know the uh, the kitchen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the we we, we women were working in the kitchen. And there was very, you know, even less than here, food was so precise, a uh, uh, quantity of food <laughs> compared to women that you couldn't really take any repete, you know, no mm, second. Second. No second, second helping. No second. And there were, there were few women, well, there were some women from Africa. And I remember the women from Africa would go and try to get more, and she couldn't get it. And I felt so guilty that uh, we had to do some, as we say, positive discrimination, you know. So, so I had to go and uh, and lobby for her, you know. So I couldn't really lobby for her, so I had to go myself uh, and uh, say something I know in or I don't know what. <laughs> to take more food and bring it to her. Uh, so it was really... Very, very political work in that kitchen. I see. It's not easy because um, uh, because there was really anyway. So we, uh, uh, so, um, but I think uh, uh, that was the first time I saw women, uh, a lesbian dancing in the uh, in the in the without um, top. top. That was really and you thought you were in heaven. Yeah. No, I was embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, first time you're first embarrassed. Before. She wasn't identified. Still. I was not yet like them, you know. I was still in a skirt. In a skirt you know. So, um, so what that do was you cook best? What do you cook best? No, I didn't cook there. No, no, no. I was just helping the kitchen uh, cleaning and uh, you know, you know, this self organizing. But I, it was um, really a, a, a conference that changed uh, uh, changed what, uh, the course. Intensive, right? It was totally intensive. It was a crash course. No, it was a crash <laughs> course, but but it was a crash course for different uh, from different sides because first there was a total crash of the cultures. I was. 
as uh, uh, trying to mediate between, in, not only in the kitchen, between the women from Africa and you know, non-Africa, because also they were uh, right, they were strict, because they wanted to give everybody equal. And I thought there should be some positive discrimination, so these are two political uh, sides. Options. But, options. Mm -hmm. but there was other problems with that uh, some uh, lesbians from Africa uh, were, uh, were living in, in uh, houses of women, in Geneva because there was no money in, ha in, in flats and they didn't, couldn't understand the, the habits of the women from Geneva like you know at certain time you can't do this, you can't take this glass for, for this is glass for water, this is glass for, because that's how she lives and in the African woman just picks up anything and the woman comes and says uh uh, she feels this is racist because in her country, it doesn't matter which class you take. So it was Cultural really, shock. it was, a, it was, but yeah, it was so other, many other work that you, we had to do. I mean, at least I was picking up in, in meantime that it, I hardly got to workshops because it was uh, really not easy because the, 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 some women from Africa couldn't even uh, listen to the workshops because they were so feeling uh, in, uneasy in the flats of white women in Geneva. They've never been in Europe and they couldn't not feel they can do anything, everything was nice and clean and, and, and the women did the best they could and I was trying to make them understand the other one is like really more just listening to their story. So, uh, so I, I, I thought that this was really uh, incredible for me, uh, this, uh, how much work we have to do on these cultural differences and mm -hmm. racism and, and all these things because everything we tend to to, to feel as hurt and I'm into emotional issues and then the second one was that um, that there are lesbians in the whole world this was I think the main the main issue was that there were lesbians in all continents you know mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. which we couldn't really understand at that time and the third one was that there were uh, some fantastic moments when we were singing in the in, in the in the in, in the audience, it was a uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau. What there are all these all these you know in in Geneva University every hall like here has some name or of some man who that we learned in a primary school. I mean I all oh, forgot them even you know. So there were all these titles of these guys you know, and um, but the, there was uh, also some uh, uh, very beautiful moments uh, mm -hmm. in, in in that. But there were again there were some uh, there were some conflicts because the African women from Africa would not talk uh, French. You know, I mean this. Oh, there was a riot. There was a riot, wasn't there? No, there was no riot. There was no Something riot. like that. No, there no, was a there demonstration. Was no demonstration. There demonstration. No, 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 yeah, no. maybe we can. Yeah. yeah. Can now you say your story from that, that conference. <laughs> there was a demonstration. Uh, there were six hundred women who came out in the street, and um, we had. Uh, we had no authorization to do demonstrations because, of course, we were against asking any authorization. And the pigs were there, and uh, so went to them, and they said, okay, uh, what do you intend to do? So we said, okay, we'll go here, 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 here. And they didn't, they didn't really say you, you shouldn't. So off we went. And there was one motorcycle in front and one motorcycle in the back, and like this, we went through the city, and we ended up in front of... Uh, of uh, sculpture, two women together, oh, yes, like I this, know. in front of the lake, and uh, officially it's because uh, when Geneva got into the Confederation of Switzerland. So one lady is Geneva and the other one is the Confederation. <laughs> and we decided, of course, that they were lesbians, and yes. we decided, of course, that uh, it was the great symbol to claim uh, for, so, so that uh, lesbians who are oppressed in their countries could be uh, accepted as refugee in, uh, in Switzerland and such things. And uh, finally de dissolved the demonstration and afterwards we had to trial because of that for an un unauthorized demonstration, mm -hmm. you know. So we went to the tribunal and decided to defend ourselves and we claimed that we didn't know that it was How illegal. How many of you went to the tribunal? There was two of us whose names were, were given, a friend of mine and myself. So we argued that uh, we didn't know it was illegal that the guys helped us through the city, so we thought it was fine. 
I even had a picture of me talking with the policeman. It's very funny because I was very small and he was very tall like this, you know. And it looks like we are talking together normally. It doesn't seem like he's saying you should uh, disperse immediately, otherwise we charge. And uh, believe it or not, but the name of the judge was Madame Bonne Femme, <laughs> which means good lady. Good lady yeah. And she, she let us free, you know. So she was good. And she so was so we, we thought it might be like this. Some, someone, some, someone went outside to buy some roses, you know. And we, we bought some 12 white roses. And when she said, OK, it's fine. You are released. Someone came and gave her the roses. Wow. And there was a, we, we didn't want it to, to have the, the press do pictures. So we said to the press, no pictures, no pictures, no pictures. And there was one who was standing on top, hidden somewhere, and he kept on doing pictures. And I was very upset. So I jumped on him, and I asked him his, um, his uh, press, press card, you know, and he did like this, and I took the press card and I went away. And then through a lawyer, I exchanged the press card against the, the pictures. So two days after, we did a <laughs> an appointment, I gave him back his press card, and he gave me the pictures, and that was it. So there was no riot, but one thing there was is that some young women who are close to Greenham Common Movement uh -huh. got uh, influenced by a CIA agent or an agent of I, I don't know what institution, but certainly not ours. And uh, we were housing some of the women in private houses, but some of the women in some basements that we have that are made for the security, not only for nuclear accidents, but also for any other e accident, shelter. let's say it's a sort of a shelter, it's below earth, below buildings, mm -hmm. and if the mountain is falling on half of the city, mm -hmm. this could be opened and you could house many people and there is, uh, there is a surgical room and everything. And these ladies saw they were doing a wonderful uh, anti-nuclear act and they broke into the the surgical room and they broke everything and they and they painted all over anti-nuclear slogans so on and so forth and they sort of thought it was something great to do and that they'll have a great trial and that they'll be able to explain to the entire earth why they were doing so and of course there was no trial that at all because we didn't find it political at all and we just paid the 10,000 Swiss francs that we were supposed to pay to get out of the shit so that we could still rent events in the, in the future and this woman who manipulated them, I saw her later on in another conference, which was a women's health conference in Costa Rica, under another name. And I thought, this is it, you know. Here she comes again to do the mess. Uh -huh. And this time, she kept on interviewing the most radical woman and making pictures of each of them. And I thought, my God, she's doing such a collection of pictures. It's not good for us. So I thought, OK, good. I'll get into the room and I'll take all the roles. You know, it, it's, my, it's, a, it's a mania. You know, I'm a maniac of, of these roles, you know. <laughs> so I get the keys of the room. I get into the room and I take all the roles I can find and I get out. And we get to develop them and they were all white. So all the roles that she had used, she had sent them over already. Yes, this happens in the women's movement. But since then, I haven't, it was still liberation. I haven't seen her anymore in any conference because now, after doing this, she knew she was uncovered. Uh -huh. So it was, it was finished for her because she, she was very easy to recognize physically. I mean, it's, it's not a, someone that could go into a, a third name and show up again. So I, at least I, I uncovered her. So. Bravo, what about bravo. previous conferences before this Geneva one? Yes, there was one in Amsterdam. At that time it was, uh, do you remember Sylvia Buren? Of course. Sylvia Buren, oh, such a wonderful woman. Yeah. And she was part of the, Sylvia Buren, oh, la, 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 la. She was one of the first to handle the Elise Secretaria. <laughs> oh, la, oh, la, la, she was really someone. And uh, powerful fun, pa powerful, wonderful, very energetic. Full so, of when ideas. was the Amsterdam conference? <clears throat> In the early 80s, uh -huh. I don't really remember. It was smaller than ours, by the way. And before that, that was the first one, or which was there? The there first? is one I'm missing. So, there is one I'm missing. I should go back to the archives. Uh, there was Amsterdam, Geneva, there must have been one in between, but I don't. Germany. 
Maybe in Germany. Yeah. So the first Possibly. lesbian conference yes. was in yes. Amsterdam. Yes. Yeah. In Possibly early eighties. Yeah. In early eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The in Dutch Europe. have played in a Europe. wonderful role, let's be honest. For the for the lesbian movement. Who? The Dutch. No. The women from Holland. They played a major role. Uh, I was into the Philippines in another international women and health conference. Oh, Stasha uh, was there. And uh, the Filipinos, they wanted someone to speak about lesbianism in, in a plenary, but they had nobody, of course, because none of them there to do it. So they came to me and said, uh, 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 wouldn't you mind doing it? So uh, at that time, I was working in India. Oh, that's so uh, I said, fine. So I came uh, and I did the presentation. First I had of course to say that I was speaking in my own name and not in the name of the groups where I was working at that time. But my Indian friends took it very well. Nobody uh, found it uh, uh, shocking. They were all heterosexuals at that time. And I could do my statement of the importance of women's autonomy, the, the critique of patriarchal society, so on and so forth. And the Filipino were just so delighted there were jumping of joy in this uh, <laughs> in this plenary, which allowed them afterwards to do a workshop in which anybody could come and, and, and participate since the door was open. You know what I mean? So I think that's quite important in our her story to remember that this moment. You know, sometimes it's one who plays this for the others, and then it's another one who's going to play this role elsewhere for for, for others. Which in Brazil? It was in 92 in the Philippines. So sadly, uh, because every story has an end, uh, the group uh, collapsed uh, after some time because uh, two women died and two women left abroad. One le left to uh, live in Amsterdam, the other one left to go back to, to USA and uh, uh, two other of our members one died of uh, lung cancer, she was a non-smoking person who was uh, eating vegetarian, and the other one committed suicide because she couldn't uh, uh, digest uh, that the other died, and uh, so the group collapsed. The group name was? Vanilla Strawberries, group of political lesbians. Yeah. The but one she mentioned at the beginning. Yes, but uh, you didn't explain how you gave the title. Oh, we gave the title big of, you can imagine yourself, why vanilla strawberries? I mean, what do we do with vanilla strawberries? How do we taste vanilla strawberries? How do we use our tongue? How do we enjoy such perfumes? Well, you can imagine yourself, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> why we chose that name. And then we, we decided it was, um, it was very sensual, so we were very happy to have a sensual name. But we still wanted to have an explanation, so we added uh, political ah. lesbian uh, Once we were doing a, a, a party which was called Le Bal des Chats Sauvages. Oh. The party of the wild cats. Except that Chat has another... Yeah. Exactly. Chat, chat has chat. another meeting too. And uh, that's why we chose that name. And so our, our goal was, of course, to politicize the, the, the lesbians from the bars. So, of course, we were doing big parties. There was uh, hundreds of women coming. But, of course, we were, we were doing political discussions. It was a little more problematic to get many of them. <laughs> so, we broke our teeth on this, to be honest, because I don't think we ever politicized any uh, lesbians from, uh, from the bars. But at least we tried, which is already a, a good... Uh, a good challenge, a good thing to do in life, and we, thought we certainly had a good time. And we, I suppose, we, we inspired many women, many other groups to to dare to do things. <laughs> so we are proud of I that. like vanilla strawberries. <laughs> you like vanilla strawberries. And there is a movie which is called Le Bal des Chats Sauvages, by the way. Which has been done by a Swiss. lesbian uh, From filmmaker. Really? And yeah, yeah. She I took, saw it. She I have a, the, I have she, a she did the history much before our own group. Huh? She started from uh, the. So I think a documentary. She, yeah, yes. a documentary. I think she's covering. Uh, Swiss uh, lesbians. A whole century of, uh, of uh, 
presence of uh, uh, nuns. No, I don't know how far she went, but quite far. She has many, many <coughs> testimonies. She interviewed uh, women who are old today and asked them how it was in, in their time. Uh, the 30s, the 50s, she compared different periods. The 30s, the 50s, and the 70s, more or less. And, and the film is uh, called uh, Le Val des Chats Souvent. What about the lesbian meetings in the 70s? And on national level? Uh, to my knowledge, there was no lesbian meeting in the 70s. In the 70s, the women's movement was uh, uh, all together. Mm -hmm. It was really the feminist movement. And there was groups within the feminist movement, like lesbian groups, uh, groups working on women and health, uh, groups working on mental health, groups working on uh, whatever. But uh, there, there was no such thing as uh, lesbian meetings. Uh, it was just starting at, in the 70s. In, in, in our bodies and ourselves. At the international level, <coughs> And the, which was the first lesbian group really? in Switzerland? Uh, in Europe? Oh. I don't know. I don't well, know. Monique Wittig made, uh, made one at the beginning of. Uh, wait a minute, what was it? I knew. It was uh, 71. Yeah, probably in the early 70s. The, uh, the Rouge, what was yeah, the best? Green Rouge. Yes, Le Guin Rouge. Le Guin Rouge. Yeah. They even had what a newspaper. Dyke, uh, Red, yeah. Red Dykes. Red Dykes. Red Dykes. That's probably one of the first. We had yeah. one. Uh, Mon and, the, and the others, but Monique Wittig and the others, because there was a gay, a gay uh, uh, Arcadie. Mm -hmm. There was a gay, uh, a gay group from 54 in France, in Paris. And by 71, it, it drops. And then yeah. there is a revolutionary gay uh, group and the Red le Dykes. Far, yes. Far, le Front Homosexuel yes. d'Action Révolutionnaire. Yes. Which was a mixed group yes. in which lesbians and gays were together. And yes. from there, lesbians escaped because they realized that the gays mm. were mm. rather not well, interested in their issues. And, but they made and the they created red lesbian red groups. That's but the, the early 70s. But can you imagine the title? It was Red Dykes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the dyke was a bad word. To yeah. Yeah. Green was a very strong yeah, word to, to, to be used at that time, you know. Because they destroyed me last year, these gay guys. So we have to be very careful how we do our alliances, yeah. on what and how, and how we keep our autonomy and not mm. to, to remain so sane. To remain sane, yeah. To remain sane. Thank yes. you. Because there are <laughs> alliances that have to be done, but how and when and how long, you know, and on what topic. So, so just to end, uh, to end, so the the, uh, the Dyke Rouge were, were, were at 71, and uh, Vanille Fraise was when? No, no, before Vanilla Strawberries, there was another group in Geneva which was called Le Groupe des Lesbiennes, but uh, it had no publication. Short time, and in which the 70s, was it did exist. Are still in the yeah, yeah, in the 70s, but it had no. Um, I know it traces, but never mind. No traces. A few leaflets, though. A few so leaflets. Right. I remember one leaflet saying. Uh, uh, sorry to disturb your heterosexual sisters. Uh, there was a leaflet like this. Bravo. Uh, but the, so there are few traces we have of that group, but not something as important as Le Guin Rouge. And when did you start it with the feminist? Artists? With the <coughs> feminist the movement, I started in '71, the beginning of the movement in Geneva. I was very young and. Uh, Enthusiastic. I, uh, huh? Enthusiastic. Well, I was uh, <laughs> was very shy, and I had had uh, I had had an abortion uh, not long ago, which was difficult to to get because it was uh, illegal at that time, and I fell into an anarchist uh, place where there was some leaflets of the women's movement, and I thought, ah, this is where I should go. And promptly, I went out to the first meetings. There was uh, sixty women, eighty women. <gasps> Such a big yeah, yeah, yeah. It was big meetings we were having in Geneva, and uh, I didn't know if I was really part of them. They were kissing each other, and uh, I was feeling so shy. And they were all in dresses, you know, like lila color and all that, all that. They were feeling so comfortable, and I was younger. And I was full of complex, like hippie, you know, hippie style. Well, it's, it's the style of the women's liberation movement of that time, you know, yeah. it's the pink and the long dresses and so on and so forth. And uh, I was feeling very shy. I was thinking, oh my God, do I have my place there? Am I going to find my way? And uh, I wanted to do the abortion groups, the self-help groups, which I, I enjoyed a lot because we were doing consciousness raising group and action at the same time. So I loved these groups because it was really so strong. Absolutely. And I was hitchhiking through Germany 
to find the other self-help groups, you know. So I went to Heidelberg, and I went to Frankfurt, and I went to, to Berlin, and it's very easy. You go to the Frauenzentrum, <laughs> and you ask, is there a self-help group in your town? And of course you find one, and of course you are invited in someone's place, and you can stay for a few days. And I ended up in the commune of Dagmar Schultz. In Berlin! <laughs> what year? And oh, ah, she was in the movie yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what year? I ended up in, oh la la, I don't know, maybe in the 73, maybe. And I was so impressed by this commune, you know, there was only women living there and they had a bed which was five meters big you know, so that they could all sleep together in the same room if they wanted and i was just you know and we could spend the whole night playing the guitar and singing on that bed etc and i went back and within my heart was like this i was thinking oh i think i found something interesting there <laughs> And she didn't want me to hitchhike back because there was this passage, you know, you had to go through <coughs> Eastern Germany. So she took me by car on the other side to make sure that on the other side I could hitchhike and came back. That's how our friendship started. And uh, just after that, we, I got with some lesbian friends in a house in a very rural area in deep Switzerland, which is called Gruyere, where, where they do this uh, excellent cheese, by the way. So we were spending our holiday there, and I ended up in the same room as a friend of mine, and we were both like this, like this, like this, you know? <laughs> it all started because there was a mouse in, in the room. So we kept saying, what is this noise, you know? Is it your noise? It's not the, what can it be, you know? We ended up on each other because of that mouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was my coming out. <laughs> Thanks to the mouse. And uh, I went back to my commune. I was living in a mixed commune at that time. And uh, I had a clash with one of the guys of the commune because as I, as I was receiving women in the commune, he said it was very shocking and very scandalous. And it was unnatural and it was terrible. And we had a very deep discussion. And afterwards, I understood why, because this guy was raped as a boy at 14 years old or 16 years old by another man because he was working on uh, concrete work, you know, on construction work, and there he was raped. And that's why he was saying so. So you should always try to understand when you can, what's the backing of, of so certain things, you know, because sometimes it has a meaning. It doesn't come like this out of, uh, out of nowhere, you know. And I left that commune, and I went to yes. live in a woman's commune. Of but it's nice story. Yes. It's time for better, it's All nice in Geneva story. area. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bus. <laughs> <laughs>